can I share a little secret with you on how I do my meal planning method so that you can build quick and healthy weekly menus for your family? It's the best. <laughs> this is a little trick I use when selecting the meals that we're going to have each week. Sometimes we will use that favorite recipe or just something new that we have found on social media or Pinterest that we want to try. But a lot of the times we just want to keep it super simple and easy. And this is my favorite method for building a meal plan quickly while also keeping it healthy. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. Now, the reason I wanted to bring this topic up today is because it actually came up as somebody was joining our Facebook community. And one of the questions that we ask in our little questionnaire as you come into our free Facebook community is what your biggest struggle is when it comes to building routines or getting organized. And Doris, when Doris had joined the Facebook community, she had mentioned that uh, one of her biggest struggles is meal planning uh, because she is a vegetarian and her husband is not. And while we aren't vegetarians ourselves, uh, the way that we have our meal planning method in our household, it would work for vegetarians and vegans and uh, paleo and whatever, whatever type of diet you have, this method would still work for you. And it also works if you are super busy or if you have all the time in the world to prep your meals and cook and all the things. It's just a really simple go-to way to build a meal quickly, but also be able to accommodate the different diets that you or your family might have. And before we get into the method, I want to just mention a couple of quick things. First, if you want to join that free Facebook community, please come join us. We would love to have you in there. You can come and join us at facebook.com slash groups slash the routine advantage community. And then secondly, I am not a dietitian, <laughs> so take everything I'm saying today with a grain of salt because I do not have the dietary background and education to back it up. I'm just going to share what we do. And um, the third thing is that I do have a couple of episodes out already regarding meal planning, and we're not going to touch on those types of things in this episode. So if you want to go back and check those out, if you want a little more help regarding your meal planning routine, there is uh, the first one is episode four talks about building your meal planning routine. And then if you go to episode 19, we actually walk through creating a meal plan together. So if those would help you, then you can go back and check those out as well. So going into the actual method of how to build a meal. Now, there are a lot of different resources out there that you can get, and I'm not going to say one is better than the other, but one of the things that has helped me personally make it a lot easier to focus on what nutrition to do without focusing on the calories themselves and getting really nitpicky is focusing on the whole foods. Like when you can focus on whole foods or organic foods, you're always going to be better off than anything that's processed. So that is like our main thing. We're always trying to eat healthier and surprisingly, when you have more of the whole foods, it seems like it's actually easier to cook as well because it's all fresh and you're not trying to like read instructions on a box and put things together. And I know it's not super crazy to read instructions and make something out of a box, but it's actually easier for me to do something that is fresh. So I don't know how that, fe how that feels for you, but 
I know for myself, it's actually easier to do those whole foods and everything and it's healthier. So it works really well. But one of the guides that I like to kind of keep in the back of my mind is something called To Be Mindset. Uh, and it's by Ilana Mulstein. And I think I'm probably saying that wrong, but she has this method called the plate it method. And basically you plate your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner the same way for each meal, but you can change up the variety. And it's a really cool program that has a lot of flexibility, but it, it keeps that focus of the nutrition aspect to it. For example, for breakfast, you take your plate and you split it in half and you do half is a healthy protein and half is a healthy fiber filled carbohydrate and fiber filled carbohydrates are something like uh, your butternut squash or your sweet potatoes or maybe it is like whole fruits because they're full of fiber and so you could do kiwis or strawberries or an apple anything like that so you do half of your plate protein half of your plate a fiber filled carbohydrate now for lunch you move into a quarter of your plate is protein, a quarter of your plate is a fiber-filled carbohydrate, and then half of your plate is vegetables. And they can be cooked or fresh. And then when you move into dinner, three quarters of your plate is vegetables and a quarter of your plate is protein. So that's the guide for that program. And there's a lot of other aspects of it, of like what you want to do throughout the day. And if you get hungry, kind of what method to follow and what to do first. But I love that it's it's not super restricting and it, it's a really good guide to use as you're building your meals. So if you are interested in that, I highly recommend going and checking it out. I learned about it through the Beachbody program, but I know there's a lot of resources on Google too. So I'm a big fan of that one. I tell people about that one all the time. Uh, so if you want go check that one out and see if that helps you. And you can see the visual too. But as I'm going through my meal planning, that's kind of the guide that I'm using in the back of my mind is I'm always focusing on vegetables first. Like I grew up in a very Midwestern home where it's meat and potatoes. Like if you know anybody from the Midwest, you build your meals on meat and potatoes. And that is a really common thing. And that's what I've always done. But what usually would happen when we were um, first married is we would focus on the meat and potatoes and the vegetables is what would always come last or not at all. And so we have really flipped it as we've gotten older and we've wanted to focus on getting a lot healthier is we have flipped it and have focused on the vegetables first. And I found that when you focus on the vegetables first, even like as Doris was talking about, she's a vegetarian and her husband isn't, when you focus on the vegetables first, it's easier to build a meal that works for a lot more diet types. So if she's cooking for herself as a vegetarian and her husband is not a vegetarian, they can really make the same meal and then just omit something on her plate. So it'll be a lot easier to build a meal when you flip flop and start with the vegetables versus the meat and potatoes. So when you first are sitting down to really focus on your meals, if you have favorite recipes, absolutely use those and make those favorite family recipes or the new ones that you find. Uh, but when you are really trying to simplify things, make sure you toss in a couple of these simple meals where you can build them in like these lists. So kind of imagine where you have a list of your favorite vegetables and your favorite proteins and your favorite fiber filled carbohydrates. And then you just kind of stack them together and build this meal. So the first thing that you will want to do is grab a notebook and you're going to write all of your favorite vegetables and whether it is yours or your family's and you can do fresh, you can do roasted, maybe it is like a big mixed greens salad, maybe it's a, a Caesar romaine salad, maybe it's uh, roasted or steamed vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower or carrots or asparagus, maybe it's cauliflower rice, um, whatever it is, focus on those vegetables that you really enjoy or that you want to learn to enjoy. And then on another list, write down all of your proteins. So it may be grilled chicken or fish or steaks or the vegetarian options of protein that you really like. Just do a list of those proteins and then get a list of your fiber filled carbohydrates, which are your healthy carbs, your sweet potatoes, um, 
your fruits and things like that go in that list. And then you have a list of like your add-ins. So these are like your dressings or your sauces or the things that aren't necessarily falling into those other three categories. And so when you visually think about this, whether you write them down on paper or you're thinking about that in your head, when you go to build your meal, start with the vegetable. What vegetable do you want to have? Is it the salad? If you want the salad, then what are you going to pair for your protein? A salad would go well with a nice steak or some grilled chicken. Uh, If you are doing a salad and grilled chicken, then what type of carbohydrate? You could do some roasted butternut squash on there. You could have your meal and then have some fresh strawberries or slice an apple as your dessert. Something like that where you can build this really good meal. As another example, you could start with your cauliflower rice. And so your cauliflower rice becomes your main focus for that meal and then say you want to pair it with some scrambled eggs and some chicken as your protein and that becomes a good foundation for a healthy version of fried rice with chicken so you can have this like healthy version of americanized chinese food at home so you could do your cauliflower rice and then add some of those add-ins like your sesame oil and then you could throw in some like onions peas and carrots and get this really good healthy version of uh, cauliflower right fried rice and then add your chunks of really good saucy spiced chicken with it and then you have a good healthy meal that focuses on vegetables and then a protein if you are a vegetarian doing this then you would basically take that cauliflower rice and focus on adding the vegetables and the flavorings and everything but before you add any of the eggs or the chicken you would want to have your own type of protein and then you have the base and you have those wonderful flavored vegetables as your base and then Like for Doris, she could have a protein on her plate and then her husband could have the chicken and the eggs mixed into his for being a non-vegetarian. So your, your whole meal is focused on the same type of meal. You just kind of tweak some of those proteins or some of those add-ins to make it work for each of you. That's what my husband and I do. We don't have different diets, but we definitely have different Uh, tastes that we want. He likes spicy, I don't. It's kind of the same thing where you just have the base and then you divide it as you need to. So it's taking that vegetable and then adding the protein and then adding your fiber-filled carbohydrate and then your add-ins last. That makes it really easy to build quick meals with the ingredients that you really like. And what's really cool about this is when you have these things on hand, you can whip up meals really quickly. You can have a stock of fresh vegetables in the fridge or some frozen vegetables in the freezer. You can do the same with protein. The carbohydrates, a lot of times you can have those in your pantry, in the fridge, wherever, like obviously you can store these things everywhere. And then just have some of the dressings or the sauces or the add-ins that you and your family really like, just have them on hand in in your kitchen. And when you do that, when you're going to build a meal, that's what you do first. You pull out the vegetable and say you have all those things in the freezer, you have go-to meals already at your fingertips that you can just quickly throw together or you can bring them home and you can prep all those veggies and get them in the fridge and then all you have to do is just grab and go as you go throughout your week um, based on what you still have in your fridge and do those fridge sweeps that I have talked about before. So I did talk a lot and I probably talked really fast but I was trying to get it out for you so that you can build those meals quickly and make meal planning a whole lot easier because the goal is to be able to Think about these meals and jot them down on that calendar so that as you go through your week, you already know exactly what you're doing. You already know that it's going to be simple. It's going to be easy and quick to throw together. You're going to feed your family with good, healthy food and you don't have to worry about what's for dinner. It doesn't have to stress you out anymore and you can just omit something for someone that doesn't eat that or doesn't like that and just 
build these really customizable meals really quickly and easily. So if you have a certain method that you use to build your meals, I would love to hear about them. Come share them with me. I would love to hear it in the Facebook group. Uh, again, you can come join us at facebook.com slash groups slash the routine advantage community. And I hope to see you in there. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.